I'd like to talk to you today about how Satan deceives career women. All right, it's going to be a very important study. Um, some very brilliant women out there. And uh, I've seen some women and they get into things that are traditionally roles that, that men have held. And these women are there to prove how intelligent they are and how talented they are. And there's no doubt that they are intelligent and that they are very ta talented and capable of, of some pretty amazing things. But uh, when the women go out and they have careers, there's a way that Satan is deceiving them. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures today how Satan deceives career women. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And you're going to see how this ties in um, with a very important point here. Um, what is the most important point for a woman that is married with children? Say it that way. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. Now, the Holy Word of God, the King James Bible right here that I hold in my hands, makes a very clear distinction. There are two types of women. Younger women, in verse 14, that marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Re reproachfully. And then there's a second group in verse 15, for some are already turned aside after Satan, those that serve the devil. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what this sermon's about, and I'm going to go through other scriptures to confirm the points that I'm going to raise in this sermon to prove that it's the Word of God and not my opinions as a male chauvinistic whatever you want to try to label me as. God's purpose for brilliant, talented women. And women are brilliant. Women are talented. I am not some kind of a Muslim guy or whatever else that says women are supposed to be subject to men and they're just in the house and they don't have any brains and you just push them down and they're lesser and whatever. My no. Absolutely not. That's not the stand of a Bible-believing Christian either, by the way. What the Bible is teaching is women have an extremely important role in the home, and we will see this in the study, to teach the children, to guide the house. In other words, bear children, guide the house. The very structure of a society is in the hand of mothers. And for generations, we have had women that have left the home and gone out for after a career, and they leave their children to be raised by other people. Daycare centers, public schools. And we'll talk about this as we continue and what's happened. We have a society that's crumbling because Satan deceived a lot of brilliant women into going after a career when they should have been at home, raising up those children to be great men and women of the future. There are a lot of great men in the past that have had great mothers. A lot of great husbands that have had great wives. We'll see about a great example here in Proverbs 31. If you know about that passage, we'll go there. Um, <coughs> the biggest problem in our country right now is we have a lot of adults that were once brats that needed their mom and their mom wasn't there for them. Their mother was out pursuing a career to make ends meet, to, to uh, have that double income in the home. They weren't there to guide the house. And so those children grew up to be horrible people. Um, and by the way, if you want to disagree with the study by the time we get through all the scriptures and I show you that the Bible is teaching what I'm saying, then your problem is here with the Word of God. Don't put it on me. Okay? First Timothy chapter 2. Go back a few pages here, or one page, depending on the size of the font of your Bible. First Timothy chapter 2, 2, verse 9 through 15. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, 
not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Again, there's some really good things there, which women have gone against in many ways. Okay? You're to adorn yourself in modest apparel. What did the women's suffrage movement, the women's liberation movement of 100 years ago do? It said, women, you should start dressing like men. Put on men's pants. Cut your hair short so that you can look like a man. And now what are they trying to do here 100 years later? They're trying to do the exact opposite now. Men should, men should start wearing dresses and having their hair long and acting feminine. And you mean to tell me that God's behind all that? It's confusion. God's not the author of confusion, by the way. Might add that in there. Interesting. Verse 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Oh, see, women are being put down. No, not at all. Verse 12, But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Um, there's an old saying, you know, silence is golden. Did you know a woman can be very wise when she's silent? Because she can listen. She can study things. Her husband's there doing a business transaction, whatever else, and she can just stand there and look around and, well, there's something interesting. Let me just kind of make a little note of that. Get something out of her purse, writes it down. Hmm, okay. Uh, can I help you with anything? Oh, no, thank you. I'm wait, just waiting on my husband. Thank you very much. Go back to writing. <laughs> my wife is an expert at this whole thing. I mean, I thank the Lord for her. I mean, she can go it in. We can go into places and whatever else. And I mean, there's literally times where we're at a store and some salesman comes up and says, oh, ma'am, can I help you find anything? And she says, not my decision to make. My husband's right over here. You can talk to him. <laughs> you know. And she's going through the store and she's looking and she's going, oh, okay, look at this package here. Well, that's made in China now. Isn't that interesting? You know, and oh, they're this and they're that. And oh, okay, and, and she studies all kinds of things. Why? So that she can come home and she can say, um, honey, um, we're not going to buy that product there anymore. Huh, why? Well, it has high fructose corn syrup in it. And remember that high fructose corn syrup was what was spiking your insulin levels. It was making you really tired after you were done eating. You'd eat something with high fructose corn syrup in it. It would spike your insulin levels and you'd be walking around an hour later really tired. Oh, I'm so tired. Remember that HFCS was doing that to you? Yeah, well, she guides the house. I'm in authority, but she guides the house. Now, what if she had a career? What if she was gone all the time? Oh, honey, I can't talk right now. I have to get to work. Okay, all right, see you. you know. And she's off to her job, and I'm off to my job, and whatever else. Who's guiding the house? Hmm. Continuing, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And here's a very important thing coming up, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. What was the deception of Genesis chapter 3? Do you know what it was? Eve got away from her husband. The serpent said to Eve, the serpent beguiled Eve. She was out doing something else. A woman with a career is not a woman who's working at home under her husband's authority. That's not what I'm talking about. That's perfectly fine. We'll see that here coming up in Proverbs chapter 31. It's fine for a woman to work at home. No problem at all. But when a woman is off at some other office job or some other place or whatever else, where she's dealing with men and other women and things, and her husband's off some other place, that's dangerous. That's how sin came, came into the world. But I guess modern women are more intelligent and stronger than Eve was, the mother of all living. She was weak, but you're stronger now as a descendant, you know, how many times down? I don't think so. Eve got away from Adam. Satan asks her to make a decision, and she says, in her own way, well, I'm strong enough, I'm smart enough, I'm capable, I'm perfectly, you know, equal to Adam, I mean, whatever, I mean... I can make this decision without Adam, without consulting Adam. So she takes the fruit and she takes a bite of it. And her eyes are open. Uh, Adam, I just 
ate some of the fruit and whatever else. And, you know, the, a lot of people have been led to believe that Adam says, oh, you know, she gives also to her husband and he eats. So he's, she goes, chomp, you know, and here you go, Adam. And Adam's just kind of meekly standing there, I guess, watching the whole thing. And he goes, oh, thank you, Eve. That's not what happened. Adam was not deceived. Wherever Adam was at the time, he probably came running over there or whatever else. And the Bible doesn't say exactly what happened. But he comes over and he looks at Eve and he says, you ate of the tree. Well, if you eat of the tree, you will surely die. Oh, no. I don't want to see my wife die. I love her so much. Ah. Give me the fruit. Fill in the blanks there, whatever happened, whatever. She gives him the fruit. Are you sure of it? Yeah, I'm eating it too because I'm going to die with you. He tasted of the forbidden fruit, you know, so that he would die with his bride. Picture of Jesus Christ dying for the bride of Christ. Beautiful picture there. But the whole point is Eve got away from the authority of her husband. They didn't have any children at the time. There was no house to guide per se. But she got away from the authority of her husband, like a lot of career women do. And how many times have marriages busted up because Marriage isn't going quite so good. The woman goes off to her job and there's a guy there, a young guy, and he's a very attractive guy and whatever, and they get to talk and they, they lunch break together or whatever. They're just innocent. They're co-workers. Not a big deal. Uh -huh. And a year later, she's divorced, moved in with this guy from work and whatever else. Yeah, happens all the time. Women left the home in the primarily in the 1930s or so. You get up into World War II and you had all the, the wax thing, you know, WACS. You can check into that. The women that were there for the combat service and whatever else, that they were going into the factories and volunteering to make things. And then they stayed in the factories after the war ended. And pretty soon, all of a sudden, you had all these women that were once keepers at home, as the Bible says to do, and now they're out there with careers. Hey, I'm working here in the factory, but maybe someday I could be the supervisor. Maybe someday I could be up in management. Maybe someday I could own the company myself. Women owned, women run. You see this thing proudly, proudly run by women or something. I mean, I've seen businesses that advertise that way. What is it? She's turned aside after Satan. Career women getting outside of the home. Now you have a lot of women. They don't even want to get married. It's all about their career. Again, I've known women personally like that. Married at some point in time, they divorce their husband, they leave, and then they just career for the rest of their life. It's a terrible thing there. Verse 15, second, or 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Notwithstanding, the woman's deceived. Well, God's putting her down then. No, notwithstanding. Just hold on a second. In other words, she shall be saved in childbearing. Once God gives you children, you can be saved from the mistake that Eve made. She can be saved in childbearing if, conditional clause there, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. There's something about when a child is born, now you can redeem yourself. Why? Because you bear children and you guide the house. Okay? Let me say it this way. Has there ever been a child born that didn't love their mother? At least at first, the mother has to do something to really be bad or whatever. But, you know, then the child kind of uh, stays away from the mother. If the mother's abusive or some kind of nut, every child that's ever been born comes out. They want mom. And yet the child grows up. Mommy, mommy, pick me up, mommy. Oh, oh, honey, I have to get to work. I'm, tr I'm trying to provide for you. I'm going to give you a good life because I have a good job and I've, I went to college and I did all this stuff and, and, you know, we can have two incomes and I can really provide. There's not a child that's ever been born that really truly wants that. No child exists like that. Every child that's out there that still has any sense, um, they all want mom. Set the child down. What do you want today? I just want to be with you, mommy. Oh, honey, I know, I know, but I have to get to work. No, God's plan, God's original design is for you 
if you're a woman and God's given you children. Don't go out after Satan out there in the career world. You stay home and you say, I'm going to make a doctor out of this boy and I'm going to make a great woman out of this young girl here. I'm going to teach my little daughter how to work with her hands and she can go on to be an incredible artist, which we'll see here in Proverbs 31. She can work with her hands, make beautiful linen things, make beautiful dresses out of wool or make all kinds of fabric. She can do great things. She could make a lot of money from home, be a great wife, teach her how to understand different languages, reading different languages and writing and speaking different languages, understand the Bible, teaching the child. You as a mother, you say, I love my children more than anything else. You know, I've, I can say this. I've actually seen there have been a number of celebrities that have literally walked away from Hollywood to raise their children. Praise the Lord for them. I hope that they get saved. That's a great and wonderful thing. I'm out here, you're trying to be the, the big Hollywood starlet or whatever else, and all of a sudden, you get married. And there comes out that little baby. And that special connection between the mother and the child happens. And that little child looks up at you, and they reach your little chubby little hand up, little fingers up. You take that little hand, you, you kiss it. You take their little feet, and you kiss their feet, and you... Goochie, goochie, goo, you start to tickle around here and they, he, 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 they laugh and a little, little toothless grin. And you think, what's the world have to offer me? What's that career have to offer me? I want to be with this child. Oh, but I can't because nobody does that anymore and I don't want to diminish my you know, role as a woman. No, no, your talent, the brilliant ability that women have. Don't go out and try to show that you can be just as good as a man. Show that you can be better than a man by being at home and raising the children. That's the talent. That's the beautiful thing there. You know, I'm just telling you a little, another little story here. One of the most beautiful women I've ever known. Ironically, her name was Catherine, but she wasn't my wife. There was an old woman, Catherine Buckwater. Our family knew them. She was an old grandmother. Gray hair, long gray hair, wrinkled face and everything else. But that woman radiated when she talked about her grandchildren and her children. An old farm woman. And that woman there, she was so gentle. She had this real light kind of voice and she was just so gentle. And, <laughs> and she was so kind. That woman, I remember the one time her house, she had grandchildren's, you know, their fingerprints and their handprints on the door going out, you know, whatever, like the glass door, then the screen door. And she said, oh, she said, I'm sorry about the window there. Uh, she said, I know I should probably clean it, but I just can't bring myself to wash my grandchildren's hand prints off of the, the glass there. It always reminds me of them. <laughs> I mean, she just was such a, such just a radiant, loving, older woman. Just a lovely, older woman. Wasn't a supermodel or anything else, but that woman spent her life with her children. I'm not saying she was perfect. I'm sure she made plenty of mistakes, but her children, it was all about her children. And I see older women like that, that they just dedicate themselves to being there. I'll give you a, a secular example, Tasha Tudor. Uh, you can check into who she is. She was from down in Vermont. Um, Tasha Tudor, doing all kinds of special things with her children around the holidays and, and dressing her, her daughters in beautiful little dresses and, hey, let's make this stuff together and whatever. And she was an artist. And as far as I know, she worked from home. Not a saved woman. But a great example of a, what a really true lady is all about. She wasn't put down or anything else. Oh, she's just an ignorant. She just stays at home and takes care of her children and things. No, she was actually a very... You know, good woman gave her children a lot of very happy memories. And there's a lot of, you know, very godly women that did the same thing. See, that's the whole point of this thing. Don't go out there in the career world where you're going to be stressed out and where men are going to try to take advantage of you and whatever else. Use your talent. Use the, the brilliant mind that God gave you as a, as a woman to be a real true Christian lady and a real mother to your children. Well, we'd have to make sacrifices. You can't make it on one income anymore. I hear that one a lot. 
and you can't make it on one income. We do. Um, are the sacrifices worth it so that we can be around our son all the time? Yes. I mean, every day I get to hear my son laugh. Not, you know, put him on the school bus and I wonder what he's doing at school today. I wonder what they're teaching my son. I wonder if somebody's picking on him. Well, that's all needed for his development. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, he'd be really weird and whatever else if he wasn't around, you know, public school and his peers his age and whatever else. I have, we have to tell him sometimes to be quiet when we're out in public. He gets to talking to people and, you know, he's, he's extremely outgoing. People love him. You know, give me this thing of, oh, he'd be weird and backward or whatever else. I was weird and backward when I went to public school. <laughs> Should explain a few things. But uh, Proverbs chapter 31, we'll go there now. Proverbs 31. Well, I have to give my child a good, you know, uh, life and whatever else. Okay, then give yourself to him. Again, you know, I was at this store the one time at Kmart many years ago. And this woman working at the cash register, and she said, they got to talking about school and children and whatever. And she said, oh, she said, my children are after me all the time. Mom, can't you please homeschool us? And she said, oh, honey, I'd like to, but I just have to, you know, there's no way I could do that. I have to have my job. Sad. Proverbs 31, verse 10. We'll see here, because this is... One that a lot of modern career women will say, well, you know, Proverbs 31 woman, she had a job outside of the home and whatever else. She was a career woman. No, she wasn't. Let's look about this. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I can trust my wife. She's just right over here. Uh, don't have to think about what she's doing at the, her job or whatever else. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. There's some really talented female artists out there. It's not some kind of a, oh, you're, I'm putting you down, woman. Get down there and, you know, get under my feet. You know, you, you get to wax my shoes or something. No, not at all. Encourage your wife to get into some kind of a thing with her hands. Knitting, crocheting, weaving, you know, I mean, there's so many things that women can do that just make beautiful works of art. That's what she's doing. Proverbs 31 woman. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. You know, it's a, a wonderful thing to give meat to your household. Meat there referring not only to just to actual animal flesh, but I'm saying food. Uh, to make food and recipes. You know, one of the greatest joys that there is for a woman when she gets married is to make recipes for her husband and her children. Oh, mom, this is really good. And I look over and I say, honey, this is excellent. Wow, this, you really did a good job on this. Makes you feel good as a woman. But, uh, you know, I guess it makes it's more time and cost efficient to just pop stuff in the microwave and there you go, TV dinners every night or something. And on special occasions, we go out to a restaurant and eat poisonous food that we don't know how it was made and the employees are back there, you know, spitting in the deep fat fryer and whatever else. And Yeah. Verse 16. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She's a very hard worker, in other words. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Who clothed them? Well, she did. She's making the fabric and things there. We'll see about that as we continue. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. A little interesting tie in there, scarlet and purple. Uh, you go back to the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 17, Mystery Babylon. She's clothed in scarlet and purple. Hmm. Trying to imitate uh, a virtuous woman in the Bible. Picture of the Roman Catholic Church, if you don't know. And you can look at that and you can prove that because cardinals wear scarlet and bishops wear purple. Hmm. Colors of the Vatican. Verse 23, 
Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Okay, where is she making the fine linen at? Well, I guess maybe she owns a clothing company or something. No, she's making it at home. Read the context of it. Again, I've had feminist type women, feministic career women, and they'll say, you know, she's got a job, obviously. She's got a job. She's, you know, making fine linen. She's selling it at the market and she's doing all this other stuff. You can do that stuff from home, okay? <laughs> you can make things and you can go to the market. Again, my wife, she goes to the store. You know, she'll walk to the store or whatever else. There's no problem there. She takes my son, the two of them go and, hey, we need some this or that. If it's bigger items, I'll go with her. You know, not a big deal. If you can have a market or something in your area, well, absolutely, go and sell things there as a woman. Hey, honey, I need some help. Could you please carry this stuff and whatever? Yeah, sure. I'll take a day off work and I'll go with you. It's a great thing. Uh, verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, a woman who's a keeper at home, she can be there and actually read and study things. I can't tell you how indispensable my wife is. There's so many times I, I have to look into something and I say, uh, honey, could you please look into this for me? I mean, just to show you, literally, I'll be doing a video on this after I'm done with these sermons today. Right here is an article that my wife read, printed it out, and went through and highlighted all the key things for me. Why? Why did she do that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She studies things for me. Hey, honey, could you please look into this? Could you please order that? Could you please do the taxes for me? Whatever. Yeah, sure, I'll take care of that stuff. My wife is brilliant. She's a very smart woman. She could go out and have any career she wanted if she put her mind to it. Um, she doesn't want to. She wants to serve me and the Lord in this home and be there for our son and teach him things, teach him great things so that he'll grow up to be a great man someday. We don't want our son being taught by a bunch of lost, hell-bound, wicked, evolutionary sinners, perverts and things like that at some public school. We don't want our son ruined. Verse 27, She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. The Bible talks about these women in 1 Timothy chapter 5 that they, they learn to be idle and tattlers and things like that. Verse 28, look at this. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her, own, of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. It's a great thing for a woman to get to a point where she can do work of some kind from the home. Let her own works praise her in the gates. Uh, my wife has been a big part of this ministry. She came in and she joined in. She saw what I was doing and she said, okay, I'm, at first I was, yeah, no, you don't, I don't want you to be part of the ministry. I'll just take care of this type of stuff. And she'd go out and she'd do the dishes and she was doing the typical wife type of things. And then she'd see I'm getting stressed out by this or that or whatever else and she'd say oh, let me see if I can help you study that let me see if I can help you with this do you need me to do something well yeah if you could look up this for me or look up that for me. yeah I'll do that that's what she's done and she's never said well you know I need my own office you know someplace my own office building where I can work and I can have my career and I'm actually going to go work with you know whatever here and uh, she works here from the home and right now, she and my son, I think, are making a recipe or something, if I remember correctly. She's doing her best to help raise up our son, to guide the house. And I'll tell you right now, I can literally say this, as God is my witness, if the Lord had not brought my wife into my life, I don't think I'd even be alive today. My health was so poor, was so bad, and I did just I just didn't have the conviction 
to be quite frank, to eat the right kind of foods. I just was addicted to sugar and candy and all the other stuff there, you know, and uh, poison pop and the whole deal and fast food and, and whatnot. The Lord brought my wife into my life and it was just, no, we can't do this. And sometimes she let, you know, I would really push her on it and I'd say, I'm getting some of this. I haven't had any in a while. In a while, it's no big deal. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, I'm sick and I'm, I got all kinds of things going wrong with me. And she says, yeah, how's that stuff working out, honey? <laughs> you know? And are you sure you want to get some more? I can get you some more. That'd be fine. You want another plate of it? No, I, no it's, I feel terrible. Yeah, I try to warn you. And I remember the one time she literally said, yeah, you, you obeyed Satan by getting that stuff. You went along with the devil getting that. And I glared at her, you know, and because I knew she was right. <laughs> and uh, I've learned a lot because of my wife. But how would I have learned all those things from her if she was a career woman? And she had no time to guide the house. Can women uh, do brilliant things? Yeah. Are women... Uh, very smart in things? Absolutely. And they should be using those talents and those abilities to raise up their children and to make their husband a greater success. My wife, I'll tell you how nutty my wife is. She's even trying to get me to clean up my speech. She says, where's the word gonna in the Bible? G-O-N-N-A, where's it at? Honey, I'm a country guy. I don't, I, I say go on it. And I mean, I've, I've had arguments with her. I yell at her, you know, and everything else. I'm not changing my speech. What are you trying to turn me into some kind of scholar and say it the right way? And the Lord says, she's right. <laughs> and, it, and she says, where's that in the Bible? I, I want my husband to speak. She says, I know you're very intelligent, Brian. You're capable of more, you know, of better speech. <sighs> All right, you know, um, I used to say it's like, it's just like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and she said, you know, probably should tone that down a little bit. So I've been trying to do that and I've been trying to clean up my speech. I don't use profanity, haven't since I was a teenager when I was lost and trying to impress people, you know, trying to look tough and whatever else. That's why I cussed back as a teenager, as a lost, you know, church going Christian. Um, but clean up my speech in the sense of my English, you know, slow my speech down a little bit more, try to get my words out clearly, say things the right way, don't shorten words that shouldn't be shortened. Why is my wife doing that? Because she's trying to guide the house. All the time my son will say things, you know, it just calls, it's this, and she said, it's not, the word calls is not there, it's be calls. There's cause and effect, but that's not the proper way that you were using that word. Now say because. And my son went, ah, say because. Because. And she'll say, again, because. And she'll take him through the whole thing, sit there, just make him say it over and over again. And now a lot of times when he's speaking, he'll say, um, Mom, it was just, it's just because of, blah, blah, blah. and he'll continue talking. Why? because she's guiding the house. My wife that was in military intelligence, my wife that's a military veteran, veteran of a foreign war, two branches of the military, gone through different universities, was actually supposed to go to Georgetown University at one point in time. Praise the Lord she didn't go there, biggest Jesuit school in America. But she was there. She talked to a professor, a PhD Jesuit, you know, trying to get her to come to Georgetown. You know, my wife is capable of a lot of things. Talk to Angela Merkel in person when she was going to university. And Angela Merkel said, we'd love to have you come over. And, you know, basically my wife could have worked for Merkel. You know, <laughs> my wife's very capable, but she wanted what God wanted. And what God wanted, according to the scriptures, is for her to marry, to bear children and to guide the, the house and give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. My wife wants to get rid of that curse of Eve. The curse where Eve walked away from her husband, from Adam, and went over and listened to Satan and let Satan beguile her. 
my wife doesn't want anything to do with the satanic things of this world. Ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. Come here to public school and we'll train you to be a good atheist, to be woke and all this other satanic stuff out there. If you're a Christian and you're sending your children to public school, I question your salvation. I really honestly do. Public schooling is not an option anymore. The stuff that they're doing and whatever else, having st storybook time and some transgendered pervert comes in there and reading to your child or whatever else, and they're putting books in the library that says it's okay for pedophilia. I've heard some of that stuff. Oh, you, you need to, uh, what's the thing? Um, it's not woke culture. There's this other thing, uh, this thing that you're supposed to feel bad about, your white heritage or something like this. Um, I mean, it's, it's disgusting. The public schools in this nation need to be shut down. I mean, just think about one of the, the my favorite thing with public schooling. Think about this. They're going to teach your child about climate change and about lowering their carbon footprint um, while sending out a huge diesel guzzling bus, which is extremely inefficient with fuel consumption. They go out, they pick your child up, and then they drive to a huge big building Tens of thousands of square feet is this building, and it's built with concrete block, which is the worst insulating thing out there. Um, and they're going to teach your child about lowering their carbon footprint. You know, don't take too many baths. It's not good for Mother Earth or something like this. But you can come here to school, and we can just burn through fuel. You know, they're heating these buildings with fossil fuels, non-renewable energy. They're heating them with that. But that's okay. We're going to teach you how to take care of the environment. <laughs> a bunch of idiots. Um, don't send your children to public school. And if they're in there, get them out. You say, well, we can't. My career. Leave your career. Be a keeper at home. Guide the house. Raise those children right. I mean, do you realize by putting you as a woman, putting those children in public school, you're saying somebody else can do a better job raising your children than you can? <laughs> really? Well, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified to teach my children. Then get qualified. Go out there and study. Pick up some books. Read. Research. Teach your children the kind of things that you want them to be taught. Right now, my son wants more than anything else to be a pilot when he gets older. Not a preacher. He wants to be a pilot. He wants to fly airplanes. You know what we're doing? We're buying him books about airplanes. We still teach him scriptures. We still sing hymns every night. Everything else? Sure. But my son wants to be a pilot. And we're encouraging him to do that. We're encouraging him to study aviation history, study different types of jets and, and airplanes. And, and, you know, we'll be outside now and he'll look up and he'll say, oh, that, that plane has turboprop. That's a turboprop airplane there. <laughs> you know, oh, that's a jet airplane there. That's, that, you know, oh, there's a Piper Cub going over. He's starting to get to understand these different things. Eight years old. We're going to encourage that, but we want him to do it the right way. I don't want him to, to be a commercial pilot and have to go along with a bunch of government regulations and whatever else. Proverbs chapter 10. One more place to turn to here in this study. I mean, why would you want your child all the special things that your little boy or your little girl and you're going to give that to somebody else to enjoy? You know, I remember there's an old song, a bunch of different people sang it and whatever else, uh, the Cats in the Cradle song, and, and it's about this, this guy that he's there and his little boy comes up to him and he says, can we play, Dad? And, he's, and the dad says, no, son, you know, I have to get to work and whatever else, and I'm just, I don't have any time. And as the boy gets older, he's, your dad, could we do this? Could we do that? No, son, I have to work. And finally, the, the man gets old enough. Now he's retired and his son moved away and he's got his own job. And, he, and the father calls up the son and he says, Hey, son, could we go out to eat sometime? I'd like to see you. I'd like to talk to you. And the son says, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. New job's a hassle and the kids got the flu, but it's sure nice talking to you. I remember hearing that song as a you know, lost teenager and, and whatnot. Yeah. And you know, that's a good example of what happens to career women. What happened to my children? Boy, they grew up so fast. Yeah, because you weren't around them. You put them in school. 
You let somebody else raise your children. Oh, I don't understand where they picked up all these bad habits. I know where they picked them up. They picked them up in the public school that you threw them into. Because you're trying to do what's best for them. Give them lots of money. Children don't want money. They want mommy. Okay? I'll say that one more time. Children don't want money. They want mommy. The creator of the universe, the creator of the world, the creator of you, the creator of your children. And he says, be a keeper at home. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to say you're stupid or whatever else or you're lesser than a man. You don't have anything to prove. I need to get out there and show I'm just as good as a man. Why? Like I said earlier, show that you're better than a man. I'm better than a man as a woman. I can go out there and I can raise my child and make my child a great success. I want my child to grow up and do great things. And if you're saved, do great things for the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You get real foolish when you go to public school because mommy has to have a job. You learn a lot of foolish things from the fools that are there. A bunch of wicked servants of the devil that are there trying to mess up your child. Verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Righteousness is what you, you are, what you are concerned with when you're a mother that wants to raise your own children. That's a righteous and holy thing to do. But the treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Little story here. Knew of a woman, got married, left her husband early on, and that woman went out there and she got a career. She was a professional working with the government position, doing welfare type of stuff and whatever else and administrative things. She knew the DuPont family. Um, she was a big shot. And we would go to visit her. She was, my parents knew her. And we'd go to visit her. I remember she had marble countertops in her kitchen, mirrored walls, marble statues, classic, you know, reproductions of Greek, different statues and things like this, you know, probably cost thousands of dollars each. Just her house was just filled with just luxurious. You know, you just walk through as a little boy. I remember walking through just kind of, you know, oh, sit down and you're thinking, okay, I better, do I have any dirt on me? I don't, I don't want to get all this spotless stuff, you know, dirty. And you're just kind of sitting there going, you know, I'm in this, like an art gallery or something like this. And you know what? She's old now. No children. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. I wonder how many times those marble statues come up and say, Mommy, can you hug me? Mommy, can you hold me? Look what I made for you, Mommy. Little note. Little love note. I love you, Mom. Mommy, can we make a recipe together? It's not worth it. You career women out there, it's not worth it. If you have children, quit your career. Make the sacrifices. You'd never regret it. And your children will rise up and call you blessed. Verse 3. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. All that these career women are working for, it's going to be destroyed in the future. How interesting. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Hmm. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. Who teaches him that? Who's going to teach him? He that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. What do you do when you go to school? What time is that? Right around harvest time. The autumn. You go in there. I'm so bored in this stupid class. <laughs> how many sons out there, how many daughters out there, 
would rather be at home with dad and mom or with mom. Dad's off at work someplace. Mom's out there. Let's go out and pick some apples. Let's make some recipes for dad when he gets home. And we have a bunch of gardening type of stuff to do here. Come on, kids. Let's go on out and let's harvest. Oh, would you rather go to public school? I'd rather put you in public school, rather. I'll put you in there and everything else. Um, because I have, you know, my career I need to think about. If you're a career woman, you've turned aside after Satan. Period. I don't care what you have to say about it. Put your nasty comments down below. This is chauvinistic. It's, you know, whatever else. I care about you. I'm telling you the truth. Um, there are a lot of women out there that have come to a point in their, in their life where they realize, I want to be home with my children. I want to be there to tuck them in at night. I don't want to have to work late at the office. I want to be there for my children, my little, my little girl, my little boy. And you know what? They're coming home and they're telling me what these monsters are teaching them in the public school. I don't want my children being around that. I don't want my children being taught that Islam is okay and we're going to be forcing, today we're going to do Muslim prayers and things to celebrate Muslim Appreciation Day or some satanic nonsense. No, no, that goes against my religious beliefs. They're coming home. They're, being, they're going to be with me now. We'll have one income. We'll make the sacrifices. Hey, if we can't go to the grocery store during the day because the only vehicle we have, we had to drop down to one vehicle, and the only one we have, my husband had to take to work. Okay. I remember there were times my mother, growing up, we'd have to go shopping or something like that. She'd take my dad to work. My dad would drive her to, you know, to his job, and then she'd drive the car home so we'd have a car that we'd go shopping with. And, you know, she put us in public school, but I'm talking during the summer months and things, you know. Um, I, I'm the product of public school education. And it messed me up bad. I got involved with the wrong crowds and whatever else and things. If I go back to my childhood, I'd say, I'm not going to school. And I remember so many days. I mean, I did, I did not want to go to school. It was terrible. My first experience, the first couple of days I was in kindergarten as a little boy, I stood in the corner. You say, oh boy, you really must have been bad. No, actually, I stood there of my own free will. I can still remember it to this day. I remember I went in and I looked around at all the other children and they said, oh, come on in, Brian, you know, you can be with all the other children. And I walked right over to the corner and I stood in the corner. And I remember this teacher, uh, she came along and she said, you know, why don't you come and sit down? And I just, no, <laughs> I wouldn't leave the corner. You know, eventually I finally did, but you know, after a couple of days, but I remember that they were having powdered donuts and I remember she came over and she handed me a powdered donut and I ate it and I'm standing there. And I was still standing in the corner. I didn't want to be at the public school. And we had one income, by the way, growing up. It's just that, oh, the public school's the thing to do. Send your children off to public school. How many times, do you know, running out there to get the stinking school bus. I can still hear the sound of a school bus decelerating, downshifting as it's coming down the hill. Every time I hear a school bus downshift, I always think back to, oh, I'm going to be late. I'm going to miss the school bus and whatever else. I remember the one time I was building a, a model something or other. I don't remember what it was anymore, but I was using super glue and it was in the morning and I wanted to build my little model airplane or car or whatever. And I remember I was, you know, there and I was doing this thing. And I went and got on the school bus and we're going to school and, uh, you know, the school bus is, uh, 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 and I remember I was just, oh, oh, I started just feeling really sick. And we got to the school, you know, and, you know, and the, and the bus door opens up, school bus door opens up and all the kids are coming out. And I just was, I was walking out and I was probably about as green as, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I was looking pretty sick. And I remember I walked over, walked down the steps, and I walked out, and the teacher's there, and she says, oh, good morning, Brian. And I just went right past her, right over into the grass, and just started just vomiting, just puking. And um, I said, oh, what's going on? Are you, you know, or, oh, no, it looks like you're sick or whatever else. And I said, I want my mom. This little boy, you know, probably about my son's age, probably about first or second grade or something like that. I said, I want my mom. And I started crying, I want my mom. 
and they took me to the nurse's office and whatever else and they called my mother and thankfully she had the car that day and she came and she picked me up and I went home and I remember I was laying there and they said you know what did he do and I I'd explained to the nurse that I was making working on my model that morning and she said oh you probably got too many glue fumes she said did you have your window open no well, that's what happened there Brian you got sick from it but I remember I remember just like it was yesterday laying there in my bed and thinking why do I have to go to school why can't I be home here and I'd ask my mother stuff like that you know, well honey that's just the way it is it's public school you have to go to public school all children go to public school and it just didn't compute in my mind and I determined right then and there if God ever gives me children if I ever grow up and I have children they'll never be put through public school ever and I'd go to public school and they would tell me that I came from an explosion at some unknown time in the past billions of years ago you came from an explosion and then you became there were puddles of liquid and they got goo in them and living things and lightning hit it or something and then it evolved and slowly you came from a single cell bacteria to now what you are today and then I go to Sunday school and again I didn't want to be in Sunday school and I wanted to be with my dad and mom but no you have to go to Sunday school because it's the thing to do and everybody else is doing it you know that's always a good standard and I'm in Sunday school and they're teaching me that no God created me okay then I go to public school no you were created from nothing God's not the author of confusion why would you send your child into a confusing situation And you know the, the funny thing too, let me say this, another point. What happens, you say, well, there are some children that just have very rotten mothers and you might be one of those people out there and say, I wouldn't have wanted to be around my mother. She was crazy or whatever else. But was there a mother figure in your life? Perhaps your grandmother raised you while she was like a mother to me or somebody special around or whatever else? Yeah. Children want to bond with an adult and they want to bond with their mother most most of all bear children guide the house um, saw a comment a few months ago or something on one of my videos that we did about should a young Christian work or stay at home and this woman she was working on a master's degree and um, she said I wish people would really understand what this couple's trying to say in this video it's not a bad thing and she said, I'm very highly educated, very successful career, and I'm working right now on my master's degree, but I'm also leaving the professional world because I want to raise my children myself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a brilliant woman that actually figured out that her intelligence, all of her mental powers and her talents and her abilities would be better spent on her own children. Than on people out there in the career world get to the end of your life and you have just years of just an empty career pursuing that elusive thing called money that's here again here today and gone tomorrow well I had all this money I worked so hard and everything else and poof stock market crashed and the money invested that I had or you know I had it invested through some financial planner or something like that and it's all gone now I remember seeing a documentary about Argentina and there was an older, you know, woman, Argentinian woman, and she was outside of a bank and she was crying and she was saying, all my life I worked so hard, all my retirement, all of my money, and it's gone. Wouldn't that be something? You work a career your whole life as a woman? All these great achievements and everything else? And it's gone. No one to declare your generation, like the Bible talks about. Nobody's there. No children to rise up and call you blessed. Boy, my mom, she was a great woman. She did everything she could. She sacrificed for me. There was never a time when she just didn't have time for me or whatever else. I learned so much from her. What a great thing. But what a wasted life when a woman comes along and she just spends it all on her career.
I do hope that you've taken heed to this if you're a woman out there. If you're a married woman with no children, but you're planning to have children someday, get prepared to raise those children right. If you're a single woman, think in your mind and say, you know what? The Lord gives me children. I want to get married. I want to have children. And I'm going to raise my children to be better than these public school children that are coming out. If you're a married woman with children and they're in the public school system, get them out of there. Make the sacrifices. You don't have to have a career. And I can tell you right now, unless you're really a screwball, unless you're really messed up, your children are going to rise up and call you blessed when you give them the announcement that you want to be home with them. Mommy's not going to work anymore. Mommy wants to be right here with you. Wow. What a great thing that would have been for me to be told that by my mother. It didn't happen. But you can change things right now. Don't complain about what's being taught to the children in the public schools when you're being part of it yourself. When your career is so important to you that you have to put your children in the care of wicked people, wicked perverts. Give them you and not money. I do pray that you take heed to these things that I've said. And if you're saved, I pray that you ask the Lord for his direction. Consult his word and see what he wants you to do. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.